الحمد لله الحمد يوافي نعمة ويكافي مزيدا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي بدلال وجهك ولعظيم السلطان سبحانك اللهم لا نقصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أسميت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي أرسله أرسله الله إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونزيرا اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين وأوصيكم أيها المسلمون ونفسي المذنبة بتقوى الله تعالى وأحبكم على طاعته وأنهاكم عن مخالفته يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فيا عباد الله Dear brothers, dear sisters Today's talk is about hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It is actually a story and it's related to a young boy a young man that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught and this young man grew up to become one of the great Sahaba and he became known as the Mufassir of the Quran and his name as you most of us would know is Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu the son of Al-Abbas the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this story happens when Abdullah ibn Abbas was about maybe six, seven, eight years old. He was a very young boy. He didn't go to school. Today we live in unusual circumstances and some of us are homeschooling our kids. Some of us are taking care of our kids at home and are teaching them at home. This young boy, this young man, Abdullah ibn Abbas, is very young. He did not go to school, there was no school. He was taught by his parents, he was taught by the Prophet And the Prophet والسلام, described himself as إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I was sent but a teacher. He came to teach us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To teach us everything that will benefit us in this world and the next. Abdullah ibn Abbas did not go to school. But as a young man, he made his own project. And he went on and executed his project. The event is related in Bukhari that one time Abdullah ibn Abbas says, Bittu and the Khalati Maymun. He said one night, I slept, I, I had a sleepover at the house of my maternal aunt, a Sayyidah Maymuna. A Sayyidah Maymuna is one of the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu He says, Bittu and the Khalati Maymun. Now it was the habit of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi that after praying the Shah, he would, he would go to go to his home, which is attached to the mosque. So after Aisha, the Prophet والسلام, came. And he came to his house, to his house. And his house is not like a five-star hotel. And it's not, it's not like three bedroom. It's just one small room where you can barely fit in a mattress. And if you were to sleep on the mattress, 
it could barely fit in one person. Now, in this evening, we're going to have a Sayyida Maymuna, her husband, the Prophet and a young boy that's trying to sleep there. The Prophet came to the room and he, and he saw Abdullah bin Abbas. Then after a while, he told us Sayyidah Maymuna, Nan al is the boy sleeping? And she said, yes. So he lies down for a little while, and then he stood up for the night prayer. As soon as he stood up, Abdullah bin Abbas says, Fatimtu an yasal. I stood up to his left. Because the room is so small, he could not maneuver to, to stand properly beside the Prophet. The Prophet Abdullah bin Abbas narrated that he took me to his wife. He took me, he advanced a little bit and took me to his wife. And then he prayed. And then after he prayed, he went to sleep. And then in the morning, he woke up. And then it was the habit of Bilal radiallahu anhu that he would come to the Prophet's door and would knock on the door with his finger. A very faint knock. To inform the Prophet that special prayer or such prayer is about to take place. Then the Prophet would, would leave his room, his house, and go to the member, go to the mihrab, and start leaving the place. This is the event that was narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu. It looks like a very simple event. But behind this event, there is a story. Abdullah bin Abbas, he wanted, his project is, how do I observe the Prophet at night? What does he do at night? What does he do after he goes home? Does he read Quran? Does he pray? How does he pray? Abdullah bin Abbas had this project in mind. And he wanted to find out. He could have asked the Prophet he could have asked him, Oh Messenger of Allah, how do you spend the night? He could have asked his maternal aunt, Sayyidah Maimuna. He could have asked her, What does the Prophet do at night? He could have asked any of Ummahat al Mu'minin. But no. He wanted to verify himself. He wanted to be first hand witness. So what's going on? If you can see everything for yourself, why would you ask somebody else? And observing it yourself gives it a new meaning. It's a different meaning. The Abdullah bin Abbas, that's his project. Now imagine, the Prophet used to spend every night in a different home, spending equal time with his wife, spending equal time with the uh, with the community, with the companion, spending equal time with many people, trying to accommodate as many people as he can, Ali So Abdullah bin Abbas, in order, it, it, it just happens that he asked a Sayyidah Maimuna, could I sleep tonight in your house? How convenient. It just happened that they picked the night where the Prophet is going to, to spend his night there. Abdullah bin Abbas went on and did research. He conducted research and collected data. This night he is with Sayyidah Arish. This night he is with Sayyidah Maimuna. This night, he will say the same. After collecting the data, 
and finding a pattern, he finds it. That tonight is going to be a Seda Mimur, my maternal aunt. So he went to her and told her, my aunt, I'd like to see the night. I'd like to stay the night with you. She said, well, the Prophet Salam is coming tonight. He said, so what? I want to sleep the night in your house. Then she said, okay, fine. Come and sleep the night in our house. The Prophet Salam, when after finishing a shah prayer and going to the room, he saw Abdullah ibn Abbas. Now imagine, Abdullah ibn Abbas wanted to observe the Prophet Sallam at night. What does he do at night? So in order to do this, he made his research, research he collected his data, and then he made a plan. And then he executed the plan to the minor details. He wants to observe the Prophet at night. So what did he do? He made wudu. He was ready with wudu. Abdullah ibn Abbas was ready with wudu. The Prophet slept, and as Sayyidina Maimuna slept, and Abdullah ibn Abbas slept sideways, because they could not all sit on the same mattress. He slept in a perpendicular way to the Prophet and as Sayyidina Maimuna. But he was not sleeping. His eyes were wide open. They're closed, but he's awake. He's waiting. As soon as the Prophet, after sleeping some time, as soon as he woke up and performed to do, Abdullah bin Abbas stood up. The Prophet started the praying. He immediately stood beside him. He was ready. He was ready. He made his research. He made his plan. He made his wudu. He made sure that he's going to be away, which could have mean, could have meant that maybe he slept. He took a nap in the afternoon to make sure that he could stay away at night. He stood on his, on his left. The Prophet pulled him to his right. And then he prayed behind the Prophet and observed him. And in the morning, he observed what he, does, what he did in his house and the way Bilal would come and knock on his, on his door with his finger. And then he observed how the Prophet would lead the social prayer, the Fajr prayer. This is Abdullah bin Abdullah. No teacher told him, this is your project for the monks, or this is your project for the cemetery. He came up with his own project, and he came up with his own plan, and he conducted his own, without any error in the plan. The Prophet ﷺ prayed for him, and he said, Allahumma faqihu fi deen wa allimhu ta'weel. O Allah, grant him deep understanding of the religion, and teach him, and educate him, and give him the ability to interpret the Qur'an. Abdullah bin Abbas grew to become one of the greatest professors and greatest companions. Radiallahu anhu and on all the companions. These events and these stories are scattered in the books of Sunnah, in the books of Hadith. There are many stories regarding the young companions and what they did, and how smart they were, and how alert, and how attentive, in a way that one would think, how is it that today we have what we might call a gap between parents and children? And there's an age gap. My parents don't understand me. I don't understand them. How is it that these young companions didn't see that? And in many of the events and the stories that are scattered in the books of Sunnah, one can see why that was not the case. But somehow this gap 
is resolved organically, automatically. Through the teachers and through the way the parents dealt with the children and the children dealt with the parents. This is but a small story and inshallah it will help us, encourage us uh, to do further research and to find out more of how we can live as a community, as a family, and how we can live with people who are older and wiser than us and people who are younger and smarter than us. Maybe smarter and more clever. And they can find their ways and they're looking for guidance. And we're also can benefit from them as well as they can benefit from us. A poor as a follower of Taqdirullah is Taqdirullah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Kasiran, Tama Amar. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la shalika lah. Wa ashadu anna Sayyidana wa Nabiyana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم كلما تمتعت عين بنظر ووعت أذن بخبر عباد الله اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانتهوا عما نهى عنه وجزر وأخرجوا حب الدنيا من قلوبكم فإنه إذا استولى أسر واعلموا أن الله عز وجل أمركم بأمر عميم بدأ فيه بنفسه وسنى بملائكة قدبه فقال عز من قائل علينا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين ورضي الله عن السادة الخلفاء الصحابة النجداء أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأعلي يا مولانا كلمة الإيمان والحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين غير ذلك فخذه أخذ عزيز مقتدر تولى المسلمين في هذه البلدة وسائر بلاد الإسلام بعين عنايته وبأتم رعايته وأبدي العسرنا يا مولانا يسرا عاجلا غير آجل يا رب العالمين وفرج الفرض عن المكذبين ونفس الهم عن المهنمين وردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا قريما يا أكرم الأكرمين تغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيفاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة. <تصفيق>